Good morning, members. Are you ready? How many more do we need to make a quorum? I really uh, am anxious to start the meeting. Well, there is a non-member attending the meeting. Thank you very much for coming. We have reached the appointed hour. We have um, the quorum, so the uh, meeting of the Environmental Affairs Panel is now called to order. Well, may I first invite officials and also the deputations into the room. Members, we do have a long meeting today. There will be four sessions starting from 9 a.m until about uh, a quarter to six uh, in the afternoon. There will be two sessions in the morning and another two sessions in the afternoon. And in each session, I will invite the deputations to give their views on the EIA report of the third runway. And then I will give some time to the administration to reply. Is there any objection to the arrangement? In fact, it is a convention. You may have noticed that uh, some deputations may not be able to come today, yet they still want to give their views on the uh, third runway. Their written submissions have been sent to members, and this morning uh, some other written submissions are tabled. Well, uh, let me introduce the government officials attending the meeting, and they are Mr. Che Chin Wan, Deputy Director of Environmental Protection, Mr. Tang Kin Fai, Assistant Director, and Mr. Louis Chan, Principal Environmental Protection Officer, Mr. Joseph Sam, Assistant Director of AFCD, Mr. or Dr. Ivan Chan, Acting Senior Fisheries Officer, Mr. Peter Lee, General Manager, Environment Projects, AA Airport Authority, Hong Kong. Welcome. Uh, members of the public are coming in and taking their seats. Please, uh, deputations, uh, take your seats according to the uh, direction of the Secretariat. You may pull on the earpiece if need be, and there is simultaneous interpretation service. You may speak either in Cantonese, Putonghua, or English. Let me remind you that each um, deputation um, who is to speak will not be protected by the Legislative Council powers and privileges ordinance. And please uh, also um, follow the instruction uh, for uh, those attending the meeting and also members of the public who are in the public gallery. The, uh, the security arrangements have to be complied with. Uh, the uh, instruction has been sent to you, and if uh, you don't have that um, in the letter, um, they are in front of you. Um, when you, if you have any submission, uh, please put down your name on your submission so that um, your written submissions will be uh, relayed to members. Without further ado, shall we start the hearing? Uh, first of all, um, Mr. Roydham, each deputation will be given three minutes. To be fair, once uh, the bell sounds, I will ask you to stop. Mr. Tam, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Roy Tam of the Green Sense. I will speak on airspace and noise. The officials on the other side may not be familiar with that. They may be familiar with conservation. I have to speak on uh, airspace. Uh, the Air Asia um, um, had an accident when there is turbulence encountered uh, by the plane, and if the um, pilot wants to change course, the control tower says that their space is not enough and you can't change course. Hong Kong is facing the same problem. The three airports in the PRD are too close and there aren't. There isn't enough airspace. You cannot assume the ground uh, terrestrial situation with the air situation. Uh, there must be ample room between, or ample clearance between aeroplanes. So aeroplanes in the air uh, have to um, uh, have se uh, um, enough space. Uh, 
I think there is the fact. I think Mr. Peter Lee knows that, but they, the authority ref, AA refuses to acknowledge that the third runway has to borrow the airspace of Shenzhen Airport, whether it is the refly or the um, um, take off or landing. Now, after they built the third runway and the engineering sector, construction sector have got all the profits, if airspace problem has not been resolved, then there is still the problem. Now, as for the AA, they have no conscience, but I hope that officials who do have conscience will tell the, pub uh, will, um, will tell the public that the money has been thrown down the drain. If airspace is not obtained, then um, more uh, flights um, will go above uh, Park Island, and then the NEF will exceed uh, the noise limit. In fact, NEF is already a very loose standard, and with more flights, um, there will be excessive noise. Now, there are engineering sector representatives, there are business sector who blindly support the third runway. Please consider your purse. You have to pay tax. Money has to be, uh, tax has to be well spent. Even if um, the third runway will not be financed entirely by the Treasury, the uh, bill is still to be f um, paid by the Treasury because the AA has to give returns to the public covers. Now, if you think you earn uh, profits from the third runway, but and in fact, each Hong Kong person is to pay $20,000 for the third runway. The Green Sense strongly oppose the third runway. I will not interfere with uh, the content of the uh, speeches. We are speaking on the EIA assessment in respect of the third uh, runway. I hope the speakers will speak on the environment. Airspace is related to noise. Next, uh, Ms. Chao Yu-Cheng. Uh, good morning. The Friends of the Earth attends the um, hearing for the second time in respect of the third runway. And I think uh, for the arrangement for us to state our position, we are to speak on the environment. And we know that the EIA report has been approved. And uh, can you really reverse the clock, so to speak? And I really don't understand what uh, role the LegCo can play. The AA will seek financing um, very soon. and. Can the LegCo play a role? Um, I think members of the council should ask this question. Now, you have the power to monitor the executive. Uh, you are elected by your constituents because they want you to monitor public spending. The EIA report is problematic. The um, ACE um, is a rubber stamp and approved. Um, the EIA report and the EPD is, um, uh, has failed uh, to uh, hold the uh, bottom line. How is the money to be spent? It is about 100 to $200 billion. Shouldn't the Legislative Council watch this very closely and shouldn't give the airport authority free reign and dodge the monitoring of the council? Well, we may not be able to have universal suffrage, but there are members who are uh, elected by direct elections. I hope that you will uphold impartiality and fairness, put your questions that should have been put to the officials. Society has changed, and people um, are very smart, and they know, uh, what your, uh, they know how you perform. As for members who are close to the airport authority, who do not avoid the conflict of interest, who uh, think um, for the airport in raising for airport authority to raise funds, say, for example, suggesting uh, the issuing of dim sum bonds. Um, in fact, people can see who are working for the interests of the people and who are working for the um, airport authority. Please do not be a rubber stamp. Thank you. Next, Mr. Uh, Kaman Fong. 
Um, I think the importance of the Hong Kong airport to Hong Kong um, need no further explanation. It supports tourism, logistics, and other industries. According to the uh, AA, um, the runway system would reach capacity by 2016, the earliest. Even if we start the works now, we only have the third runway, 2023. Uh, so, um, at least. Uh, for seven years, the airport will be operating at capacity or near capacity. Now, this facility is very important to the economy of Hong Kong, and we can see that it faced a very tough problem for seven years. That's a serious problem. Now, according to overseas situations such as Heathrow, which has been operating at capacity, then um, the uh, flights will be attracted to other uh, places nearby. Say, for example, uh, we, um, as against Heathrow, the flights are attracted to um, Frankfurt or Paris. If you look at the PRD, uh, the airports are expanding. Say, for example, the Bayun Airport is now constructing the fourth and the fifth uh, runway, that, um, and their throughput will exceed Hong Kong. And the Shenzhen Airport uh, will build the third terminal, uh, or the third terminal will commence operation in 2015. The airport is very important to the economy of Hong Kong, and we are facing uh, tough challenges from our uh, neighboring cities. It's meaningless to argue whether we should build the airport or not. I think neighboring uh, competitors are very happy if we continue to argue. Social mobility, youth problems are um, talk of the town, and we say uh, we are limited to financial services and real estate development. But if we maintain our, uh, but we need the airport, and we keep arguing over that. Apart from having new industries, we also uphold established industries and maintain its competitiveness. This is very important. The New People's Party is a view that uh, we shouldn't argue whether we should build the airport or not. We have to understand that we need to maintain economic development. Uh, that's the basic uh, responsibility towards the future. How can we uh, improve uh, the environmental protection measures of the airport? This is the most practical approach. Next, Mr. Dominic Yin. Well, I'm not uh, speaking in the name of environmental protection groups of the mainland or of Hong Kong. I speak in the capacity of the uh, executive president of the Great China Development Association. I only have three minutes, but I will put my view comprehensively and strongly. All the Chinese in the world should be united to help Hong Kong to uh, overcome its difficulties and continue its economic uh, continuous development. Now the uh, meeting was rescheduled. I've prepared a lot of materials, um, and therefore, but I was not able to attend that meeting. I've heard all, uh, many comments. I want, don't want to go into details. I have led um, experts to visit the airport and also a brief experts on energy saving measures. I also visited the airport with many groups uh, to look at the facilities of the Hong Kong airport. I am an expert in energy and environment. As an expert, I think the XKIA has done a lot in all respects. In the past uh, decade or so, it has obtained the, the number one for several uh, on several occasions in many years. 
As for people who are in the trade, uh, the HKIA um, said the speaker has got uh, a high reputation. I find it regrettable that the HKAA has not provided very detailed analysis. I don't know what are they are afraid of. They have done a good job. Why don't they tell the people? Newspapers and magazines seldom have such uh, features. I think there should be an all-out comprehensive uh, publicity to get the support of the people for the third runway. I don't have enough time. I just think that there are two kinds of people in Hong Kong. Thank you for your view. Next is Mr. Yang Chi Kit. Good morning. I speak on behalf of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Association. We absolutely support uh, the construction of the third runway. From the data of the airport authority, we know that the, the uh, airport will be operating at capacity very soon, and we don't expand our runways, then I really don't know how the economy can be supported. Now we have the uh, following view, and that's uh, from another perspective of looking at um, the development, uh, creating jobs, um, and assist the development of East Lan Tao. We spend quite a lot of traveling time to and fro the airport. By 2013, with the third runway, the number of uh, employees will increase from 65,000 to 140 odd thousand, and the number of jobs directly and directly will be increased to 200,000. The employment will have a great prospect for East Lan Tao because there will be a population of about half a million in East Lan Tao. It will go a long way uh, to support the living of the people there. It will also save traveling time. We face competition. Uh, some say that the Zhuhai, Shenzhen uh, are competitors. If we do not build a third runway, then many uh, logistic operators will station in other airports and they will not return and invest in Hong Kong. Hong Kong has spent a lot of time on funding or seeking funding. We hope that the uh, Legislative Council will not spend too much time on filibustering. The third runway, according to experts, needs about $140 billion. If there is a delay of a year, then the additional cost will be $10 billion. And if we spend ten million on people's living, it will be good. It will be much better. Um, I hope uh, let's go members uh, will pay attention to um, the main uh, public opinion. Do not waste time. Do not waste public resources, and uh, work for the future of Hong Kong and its competitiveness. Thank you. It's the Professor uh, Philip Chen, Ken Yip uh, of Hong Kong Professionals and Senior Executive Association. Uh, demand is growing. The infrastructural facilities of HVIA will soon reach its capacity. Our association supports the expansion of the airport, uh, the 3 RS. Uh, this is quite urgent. Uh, we I, support the EIA and the 12 uh, environmental aspects assessments. Uh, we think that this is a, an effective solution uh, and there are uh, measures uh, for amelioration and uh, the impact during the course of construction will be minimized and residents nearby will benefit and the long-term environment will also improve the impact on the marine ecology. Uh, we agree that there should be uh, deep uh, cement mixing at the mud pits 
there should be restrictions on the routes and speed of marine traffic. We uh, think that the uh, mud pits should permanently be uh, uh, stopped, uh, be uh, abandoned, and uh, there should be the new marine park uh, to create a new marine ecology and there should be construction by phases. There should also be stepped up education to protect the Chinese white dolphin. We also support the environmental monitoring uh, and audit program. We think that the uh, AA should also report the progress of the works and the relevant environmental data and the progress of the works and there should be stepped up publicity and education to gain public support. Uh, we should improve our infrastructural facilities so that Hong Kong becomes more competitive. Uh, the expansion works should uh, be undertaken as quickly as possible so that Hong Kong continue, continue to be an important nexus for transport and trade. <coughs> Mr. Simon Lee Xiu Po, uh, I speak at this individual. I do not represent uh, CU, uh, the relevant academic association. Now, I love the uh, countryside. Uh, I often go to the country parks, uh, the uh, uh, ocean park, and uh, if uh, the third runway cannot be built in time, uh, the planes may be delayed. We see when we come back to Hong Kong that at certain uh, BC peak uh, hours, uh, the planes are diverted to uh, elsewhere for a while. And uh, say if there are only 10% of the flights are delayed uh, in landing uh, by 15 minutes each, uh, if we uh, take the current uh, aviation fuel price, uh, I know that the fuel prices uh, do change, uh, but uh, if uh, these planes are delayed 15 minutes, uh, then uh, we will suffer a, a loss in the uh, oil pr fuel price of about 800 to 900 million dollars, and the carbon emission uh, will increase by about 200,000 tons per year. And <clears throat> also, if the planes cannot be punctured, then, well, actually Hong Kong has been doing quite well compared with neighboring uh, airports. Now, uh, if we try to measure the time cost, if people are w delayed, uh, if you use even if you use just minimum wage, uh, that's uh, the wage cost uh, is uh, 1.9 billion dollars uh, a year. But uh, you know these people don't earn minimum wage, uh, so if you uh, we can estimate uh, that the wage loss will be about 6.2 billion dollars in 10 years. That will be 62 billion dollars, uh, uh, and uh, plus. Uh, 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 and if you take into account fuel costs, that will be uh, over $70 billion over 10 years. And uh, there will be also uh, environmental issues, uh, more air conditioning, uh, more uh, consumption of water. Uh, and uh, of course, the AA will be happy because uh, the catering facilities will make more money, but we must not overlook the impact on the environment. Next, uh, Mr. Temple Yu. Hong Kong Institute of Urban Design. <laughs> now, urban designers uh, want to come to this panel uh, because we are not only concerned about the hard data, we are also concerned about how our society builds up a quality living space. Now, the Institute of Urban Design uh, is made up of uh, professionals uh, in different sectors. Uh, 
uh, construction, uh, environment, uh, surveying, etc. Every year we deploy our expertise in education and, uh, and also developing our business. We encourage the public and the government to realize uh, more fully the value of urban design. Our city has been developing rapidly. Uh, we pursue economic uh, advantage, uh, so we uh, overlook the importance of place making, uh, creating quality living space. Uh, so, the uh, I think uh, we sh uh, our input uh, would be valuable uh, in uh, making people more aware. Now, major infrastructural projects usually have major environmental impacts. Now, usually there is insufficient uh, uh, EIA assessment and uh, the amelioration measures are usually not enough. Now, on the three RS, there may be impact on uh, reclamation, uh, we are all, but apart from that, we are also concerned about uh, missed opportunities. Uh, this is not just uh, on the basis of quantified data, uh, like uh, noise level. Now, we should uh, take into account sustainable development uh, using the uh, up-to-date technology to create quality living space. Uh, the uh, airport terminal should be well designed because this is the uh, portal to Hong Kong. Uh, we, there should be uh, uh, a manifestation uh, that Hong Kong is uh, a, uh, the confluence of uh, East and West, uh, so people should realize that they are in Hong Kong. The airport island is like a small city, so the design should take into account the uh, appearance, the distribution of the buildings and how they tie in to the uh, land town, new towns. Uh, and uh, there should be macro design uh, plus uh, uh, the imagination of urban architects. Next, uh, Ms. So Lai Chan. I am very much in support of the third runway system. Uh, the project is very urgent. Now, the government should also think of the fourth runway. Now, Hong Kong's airport is the busiest in the world and the, one of the most efficient. Now, we have to uh, deal with uh, uh, 1,100 flights per hour, and uh, uh, we have uh, 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 now uh, even if we build a third runway, uh, we will fall, in, uh, will come, become saturated in a short time. So we need to think of the fourth runway, and we need to think of how to maintain our long-term competitiveness. Now, other speakers have mentioned that apart from creating jobs, we uh, uh, so uh, uh, we should. Uh, we think that uh, there are uh, various benefits that should be highlighted. Now, uh, right now, uh, the jobs in connection with the airport uh, go beyond uh, just uh, uh, aviation uh, and uh, hotels and so on. And uh, it's 58% uh, of our uh, GDP and 47% uh, of our job opportunities. And uh, uh, in 50 years, next 50 years, it will uh, create uh, $540 billion of uh, revenue and create uh, 340,000 jobs. Uh, we should uh, be uh, take uh, ahead of the, our competitiveness. The uh, Seoul Incheon Airport already uh, is going to have the fifth airport in 2020. Uh, thai, uh, thai, Thailand's uh, Bangkok Airport will have its uh, third airport uh, runway completed in 2016. Uh, Hong Kong should uh, be more competitiveness. Hong Kong is said to be the pearl of the Orient. Uh, it's the paradise for shopping and fine food, and uh, we are an international city. If our infrastructure cannot catch up, our economy will be affected. If we continue to delay the construction costs, will continue to increase. Uh, 
and our time and our economic uh, progress will suffer. In 2011, the uh, Social Science uh, Study Center of the University of Hong Kong collected uh, 200, uh, uh, 24,000 uh, questionnaires from the respondents, and 73% uh, of the uh, commercial associations support the 3RS. It shows that we need to consolidate our position as an international metropolis. Mr. Uh, Kenneth Toh, I represent the Hong Kong Institute of Planners. Now, we have severe reservations about uh, expediting the 3RS. Uh, we can look at the EIA results. Now, it used uh, some technical uh, gimmicks to give it a pass. Now, looking at the Tongchong New Town air quality, now it's, uh, it's uh, third uh, lowest. Uh, for the, uh, for a long time. Now, even if we hike in Sai Kung, we hear the planes. Now, so uh, it, we need to improve our environment in, in effect. Now, why do we want to expedite the three hours? It said that the flights increase faster than expected. Now, what are the reasons for that? Now, it's because there are a lot of uh, uh, flight uh, rerouting. Now, we, uh, according to some experts, uh, 20 to 50 percent of the flights are mainly transfer flights, uh, of, and uh, the uh, airline companies benefit. And of course, there is some economic spin off. But is this the long-term uh, goal of Hong Kong? Now, have we discussed this fully? 20 years ago, when we built Chek Lam Kok Airport, when we moved our airport from Kai Tech to Chek Lam Kok, uh, we made a long-term planning uh, exercise. We carried out a long-term planning exercise. And now, uh, we can look at the Hong Kong, uh, at uh, the development of Hong Kong in the past 10 years. Of course, we have uh, achieved a certain GDP growth, but uh, people are earning less. The poverty is more serious. Now, the quality, happiness uh, index is lower. Now, are we really uh, that dependent on this? Uh, economic GDP achievement. Now, of course, the infrastructure has contributed to Hong Kong's economic development, but perhaps it's now time for us to uh, pause and consider what kind of economic development do we need. Now, there is a lot of uh, uh, dissent in this regard. Should we follow the same track? Now, the third runway is uh, an important issue here. Now, the third runway is only one uh, element in our future development. Next, uh, Mr. Uh, Wan Chuck Meng. Uh, I'm of the Hong Kong Taxi Owners Association Limited. The HKIA is the busiest uh, airport in the world in terms of uh, passenger and cargo uh, volume, and it's made a major contribution to Hong Kong, and in 2016 is expected to be saturated. If there is no expansion of the third runway, uh, our uh, flexibility will be limited, and our competitiveness will suffer as a result. Uh, logistics, uh, transport, uh, the sectors will lose out. Right now, Singapore has uh, left us in the dust already. Now, tourism is one of the four economic pillars of Hong Kong. Now, the taxi trade has also benefited and makes contribution to meet the uh, aviation demand uh, growth in the next 20 years, and in order to maintain Hong Kong as a city for international tourism, the new runway is urgently needed so that we can consolidate our position as an international uh, trade and transportation nexus. 
I support the AHK's effort to uh, enhance the environment, uh, maintain air quality, and uh, protect the white dolphin uh, and all the uh, mitigation measures for those purposes uh, so as to meet the objectives of uh, the EIA. Hong Kong is our home. Uh, we want Hong Kong to continue to develop. Uh, so uh, I am very much in support of the three RS. Next, uh, Mr. Wong Po Kung. Good morning, uh, Chair, p p Chairman uh, and all the members and officials. The Hong Kong Taxi Owners Association, uh, we are mainly uh, drivers, uh, taxi drivers and uh, owner, small owners. Uh, we think that the third runway is needed urgently. Uh, Hong Kong uh, is, a, is a major international uh, city. Uh, it's developing rapidly, and as the uh, neighboring cities of Hong Kong uh, move ahead rapidly, if Hong Kong lags behind, we will be marginalized. Marginalized. The third one runway's construction will benefit jobs for workers in Hong Kong. Uh, including the transportation workers. Uh, during the construction period, there will be need for more construction workers, uh, transportation for uh, construction materials, uh, and uh, the airport uh, service staff uh, uh, number more than 10,000, and uh, they, uh, it uh, contributes to the development of tourism, uh, tour coaches and taxis uh, uh, will uh, the drivers uh, will benefit and uh, the retailers uh, will also uh, uh, benefit and uh, uh, the uh, if uh, if we are lag behind uh, and uh, the then in that case the uh, Chinese white dolphins will move out of Hong Kong in the same way that Hong Kong people will emigrate. And uh, uh, the hot workers in Hong Kong will not be able to find jobs in Hong Kong, and they will uh, have to go north. Uh, and only the uh, old people will be left, and they will require a lot of subsidies from the Hong Kong government. Uh, so uh, the, where will the money come from? So we should be objective. We should not just be negative. We should be constructive and move forward. Thank you. Next, Dr. Samuel Hong. Thank you, Chairman. Um, during this EA panel meeting today, um, we talked about a, a lot of environmental impacts. I was expecting some fresh views, but it seems that many of the deputations were talking about money. And uh, s some people said um, the EIA um, is of um, Benefit to the green groups, but we are not the one who, ones who benefit. Um, all of Hong Kong actually benefits, and uh, we also benefit our future generations. I'm not sure how many of you have actually read this EIA report and uh, say that it's it, it, it and, and give it a pass. Um, for me, um, it's um, not up to standard. Um, a lot of problems such as noise and. Uh, Chinese white dolphins have not been solved. I've been involved in EIA work for years and years, and um, I believe that um, EIA is based on scientific evidence, and uh, different considerations have to be given to environmental conservation needs. Um, during this um, third runway EIA, we saw a lot of um, absurd arguments, and it served to mislead the public. Um, the so-called um, uh, very um, uh, green Earth Port Authority um, tried to mislead us um, into buying into their proposal. Um, for example, the uh, um, their engineering experts tr were trying to dodge the problem, and they were trying to avoid any um, discussions with us. And at the end of the day, um, the problems were not solved, and the uh, um, environmental advisory um, committee. 
um, had a lot of criticisms apparently, but at the end um, they were on the government side. Um, they and uh, their role was rather conflicting, and uh, their bias towards the airport authority. The entire EIA process is absurd, and uh, they received two thousand and nine hundred um, sets of comments opposing the project. And as you all know, a lot of um, young people um, find this kind of project um, white elephants. And it seems that this project will go ahead as planned. And when people say that um, this project is for our future, have you actually considered um, whether our public resources are used effectively? And uh, can we spend this money on um, the three one ray system on other aspects um, to benefit our younger generation? I hope the Legislative Council can monitor the government and the airport authority and raise questions as necessary. Thank you, Chairman. Next, um, Mr. Chen Wai Man. Um, good morning. Um, I, I'm speaking on behalf of the, uh, I'm the director of the Asian Institute of Supply Chain and Logistics. And uh, I'm sure you know um, the benefits of this expansion project to the logistics industry of Hong Kong. And uh, I'd like to talk about the EIA. Of course, this expansion project would have some um, negative impacts on the environment, but the airport itself doesn't bring any problem. The problem lies in the busy traffic or the busy air traffic. And uh, Hong Kong doesn't just depend on the expansion of the airport. Um, the, the the real reason for the expansion is the increased air traffic. Um, um, I've heard um, comments from green groups such as Green Sands, Friends of the Earth. Um, I I have a question for them. Have you actually um, um, left Hong Kong, um, uh, departed Hong Kong more than twice in the last year? If you had, then you would see the need um, to expand the airport. Hong Kong can stop the expansion, but the air traffic would not slow down. And uh, it, it only means that these flights might could be diverted to neighboring areas. And uh, from a conservation perspective, um, I'd rather um, the expansion project to go ahead in Hong Kong so that the entire process can be monitored by um, the public and the relevant bodies. I hope the green. Um, I think the green groups should be more um, impartial and uh, positive. Right now, um, they are rather um, pessimistic or or, or re reactive, and they are trying to avoid the project altogether. I'd also like to point out that um, since the Hong Kong airport is a, uh, is almost at capacity. Um, it really um, the, the saturation of the airport really threatens um, um, aviation safety, so the expansion can help that. And whether this expansion project would become a white elephant, well, it's another problem. Of course, um, the costs are rather high. We, uh, but at the same time, we have spent a lot on uh, um, environmental mitigation measures. So uh, we shouldn't adopt double standards. And after the expansion, um, this project would not be a white elephant because our utilization will increase by 70%. So uh, this argument of a white elephant does not stand, in my opinion. Next, Mr. Ringo Yu. We consider the protection measure proposed by the three one-way system a well-balanced effort that have been examined the critical elements for protecting the environment. The establishment of the new marine park will ensure the prosperity of marine life in Hong Kong water, yet maintaining the growth engine of the economy. Over the past decades, Hong Kong contractors have been involved in building some of the landmark infrastructure in Hong Kong, including reclamation of Dong Chung regions. Disney theme park and Chet Lap Hong Kong International Airport. 
marine life has been observed to repopulate in the regions soon after completion of the reclamation works. To control the disturbance of surrounding water, unknown dredging techniques known as deep cement mixing method have been identified. The state of art reclamation techniques has been deployed internationally and proven effective. Countries in Scandinavia, Europe, Japan, Korea, and U.S. have been developing and using the renowned technology for extending their offshore boundary over the past decades. The development of the third one way should be considered as one of the key infrastructure for maintaining economic competitiveness of Hong Kong, especially when facing the rapid growth of the nearby regions. The expanded airport combined with the Dongchong New Town extension developments, a meeting and incentive convention exhibition region will be emerged for a new tourism hub for the Pearl Delta region with retail and, and commercial facilities. The synergy effects of the Hong Kong Shuhai Macau Bridge, the Tin Moon Chalap Court Link, and the Hong Kong International Airport will bring tremendous economic benefits and create ample opportunities for the Hong Kong workforce. The expansion will also become a new economic powerhouse propelling for the Hong Kong economy in the coming decades. Members of the panel, we fully support the development of the third one-way system to ensure the continuous progress of Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tommy Tam. Thank you, Chairman. I represent the Hong Kong Association of China Travel Organizers Limited, and I have the following views on the expansion projects. And uh, we support the uh, um, early implementation of the third runway. And Hong Kong is a paradise for shopping and, and, and eating. And Hong Kong is also a world-class um, tourist destination as well as mice destination. And uh, um, tourism is a key trade of Hong Kong. And uh, it uh, makes up seven almost 7 percent of Hong Kong's total workforce, and it's a key driver of Hong Kong's economic growth. And uh, while treasuring the importance of the travel industry, we have to make sure the sustainable development of it. And um, if uh, our airport is about to saturate, and uh, according to um, our two existing runways will be full in two or three years' time, as many of you have pointed out. And uh, if we can have a third runway, um, according to estimates, by the year 2030, the uh, capacity, the, the handling capacity will double. And uh, and uh, however, this kind of major infrastructure projects are very time consuming. So we have to begin as soon as possible. And we cannot um, think too much about it and ignore Hong Kong's long term development needs. So uh, we hope the third runway can be um, built as soon as possible. And uh, the second issue is the uh, the balance between um, development and environmental um, um, the benefits, and and uh, we have to balance any developments with um, uh, environmental protection. If we only um, put our focus on conservation, um, we are ignoring Hong Kong's actual needs, and uh, we cannot um, further develop the society, and we would lag behind other countries. And on the third runway. Um, the government had um, a long time ago um, conducted in-depth EIA assessments and the Airport Authority um, had adopted more than 250 mitigation measures to avoid or minimize um, impacts to the environment. For example, the conservation of Chinese white dolphins, the monitoring of air quality and noise, um, improvements to the health of um, neighboring residents, etc. And uh, the plan was approved in November last year. Um, we think that uh, our, we should focus our energies on implementing the third runway as soon as possible, uh, rather than wasting too much time on uh, discussions. Next, uh, Mr. Holden Chow. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, we have to uh, balance conservation and development. This is an obvious fact. We can see that. Um, 
the third runway will create 140,000 new jobs, and uh, a lot of residents or grassroots families living in Tongchong um, understand very well of the employment opportunities the new runway will create. And uh, the new runway will also consolidate Hong Kong's position as an aviation hub. As you can see, many other um, airports in neighboring countries are building new runways. If we don't upgrade ourselves, then we will lose our competitive edge. So uh, from a development or economic perspective, the, pers um, the runway is certainly beneficial. I'm sure many of you would agree. And after the third runway, um, is in use, how do we balance conservation and development? Um, and I believe that um, the EIA report had already um, raised some suggestions and conditions um, on the, the monitoring work we may um, carry out in the future. And uh, after the implementation of the third runway, um, can we strengthen our monitoring measures and step up our penalties in order um, to safeguard our environment. I think this is something we should think about. Finally, um, for the third runway system, um, there have been some uh, controversies in the fisheries trade, and I think the government should um, meet the relevant representatives and reach a consensus as soon as possible. The government should uh, provide compensation as necessary and ensure their, um, uh, the, the livelihood of the trade. Next, Mr. Ho Hin Ming. Um, I'm a district councillor of Kowloon City and a member of the Liberal Party. Um, my fellow members will uh, give their views later on. So today, I'd like to speak on behalf of um, the residents of Kowloon City. Um, I think that striking a balance between development and conservation is important. Um, we've promised um, um, protecting the uh, um, Chinese white dolphins in the surrounding waters, and uh, the neighboring marine parks will be merged into a marine protection area. And uh, this is very, this is a very um, great proposal. But the, the matter is, how can we monitor this project? Can the government um, commission independent third parties to monitor the project? And uh, during the last advisory board meeting. Um, have we done any um, studies on um, when the when the Chinese white dolphins began um, congregating or living in that area? Were they um, so-called indigenous species, or did they migrate to that area? Um, well, we can see that the white dolphins are like humans; they would um, migrate to um, uh, better places to live if available. And another issue is noise, and in the EIA report, and uh, um, a, a new method will be adopted to minimize impacts to the residents of Songchong. But again, how do we monitor um, the projects? And during the construction, um, we are doing. Um, we will. We would adopt a non-dredging method, which also is encouraging, but again, the government has to monitor whether this method is actually used to minimize um, pollution. And uh, we should raise um, pragmatic um, measures. Um, we cannot just blindly object to the project. We should uh, adopt a more pragmatic approach. For example, how would um, the government monitor the overall project and how can third parties or um, or public groups be um, mobilized to um, monitor the project and um, raise um, mitigation measures as necessary? And on behalf of the Kowloon City residents, um, we are very um, um, disillusioned because the Kai Tak Airport used to be very busy Right now, um, uh, since um, the the airport was relocated, Kowloon City has been very quiet for ten or twenty years. So uh, the airport has a great impact on the entire city. It, the um, noise is actually not a problem for most residents. Miss Ho Kapo, um, we've talked a lot about the third runway. 
whether the third runway is actually necessary or useful, whether our existing two runways are at capacity. Well, I have something to say. Um, Professor Lee talked about um, the reason why the, uh, why our flights have to uh, um, circle above um, the airports, but um, the it's not actually a lack of runways; it's a lack of flight tracks. Um, and uh, the minimum height requirement is about fifteen thousand seven hundred feet before it can uh, um, enter Chinese airspace. Um, or else um, the flights would have to circle above um, our airports. Um, we think that this is a waste of fuel. When we look at the figures, um, the upper limit is um, um, 68 and the um, the new um, capacity is 102. So uh, I, I, it doesn't really make sense because 1 plus 1 should equal 2. And uh, the uh, we have been talking about the growth, and we were actually talking about the uh, air flight movements. And we can see that um, we have more and more small aircrafts now, especially from Chinese airlines. And for every 10 aircrafts, um, three of them are um, destined for China. And uh, s we are talking about the Hong Kong International Airport. So why are we handling so many transfer flights, and or, or, or why are we handling so many small flights? This is something we must think about. How can we uh, maximize the use of surrounding facilities? Um, we have a lot of infrastructure. For example, the Hong Kong Macau Macau Chu High Bridge, um, um, the XRL, etc. Since we have so many mega projects. Why do we still need to um, expand our airport to uh, compete? We should make use of our existing infrastructure projects to maintain um, um, the operation of our airport. And uh, do we really have an imminent need to expand our airports? Um, is it going to reach capacity very soon? Um, I think, um, according to the airport authority, I, th I, I think um, this is not an accurate reflection of the reality. Um, this cannot be um, quantified. Um, we should really optimize our airport services um, qualitatively, uh, um, rather than um, increasing um, the the handling capacity. So there's some problem with the logic. Next, Mr. Ricky Chair. Uh, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, everybody knows the tourism industry, in particular inbound tourism, is a major element of Hong Kong's economic development. Um, tourism has created a lot of jobs directly and indirectly. We are asking to go up market, reduce the number of IVS visitors. We need to invest more to attract high-spending tourists to Hong Kong and attract them to stay longer in Hong Kong. According to my experience in the tourism industry, the tourists come by air or upmarket and uh, upper end um, tourists come by air and our airport is operating near capacity. If we are to expand Expand the upmarket uh, sector, then we need to expand the airport. The airport is now operating under constraints. If we cannot increase the number of tourists coming by air, where do we uh, get the upmarket uh, tourists? Our members, the inbound tourists, uh, inbound tour operators, are willing to explore or expand new markets. But we need the expansion of um, the airport service. If the airport is not able to increase the number of inbound flights, then we cannot increase the number of inbound tourists or international tourists. Uh, should we have uh, to wait? This is not uh, to the benefit of the people of Hong Kong. The government spends 
a lot of money on expanding new markets, but the money will go down the drain if we don't increase the capacity of the airport. With the increasing number of tourists coming to Hong Kong, um, the, um, there is a need to expand capacity. Uh, flights or aeroplanes are flying around uh, Hong Kong in the air, waiting for a slot uh, to land. And um, that's also a waste of resources. That's also uh, contaminating the environment. The constraint on the airport will only uh, limit uh, the expansion of the upper end market. And when the uh, Chinese visitors return to their places, uh, that will only uh, send a bad message uh, to other uh, would-be visitors. Next, um, Mr. Di Kwok. The Hong Kong Airport Service is limited. It's a major um, airport service uh, provider. We support the third runway. It's very important to the future development of airport service sector. As for the third runway, the HKAS supports the HKAA in respect of the environmental measures. We also welcome and are willing where possible, uh, implement all the environmentally uh, friendly measures. Uh, that includes uh, by the end of 2017, the um, electrification of um, the ground vehicles at the airport. Uh, there will be more environmental um, friendly uh, facilities. The third runway is to cope with increasing demand for flights, it is to uphold Hong Kong's competitiveness, it also uh, uphold Hong Kong's status as a hub for uh, air freight and air uh, traffic. The HKS therefore supports the uh, third runway and also uh, related environmental measures. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Russell David representing Air Hong Kong. Air Hong Kong is an old cargo carrier that has been operating at Hong Kong International Airport for more than 12 years. We provide express cargo and mail services between Hong Kong and the other major cities in the Asia Pacific region in association with DHL. We see our extensive regional network of flight schedules and punctuality as an important competitive edge to e-commerce. However, these strengths are now under threat due to capacity constraints at HKIA. While we appreciate the efforts by the authorities to increase the number of slots at HKA in the near term, these are only interim relief measures. It will take at least 10 years to build the third runway. It is therefore clear the urgency that must be placed on this essential infrastructure project if we are to maintain Hong Kong as a leading international regional hub for time-critical express cargo. We acknowledge the importance of achieving a balance between the environmental considerations and economic benefits. Airlines are well aware of the impact the industry has on the environment and work very hard to mitigate that impact. In this regard, the International Air Transport Association, IATA, has set some challenging targets, importantly, including continually improving noise standards for aircraft. In this regard, Air Hong Kong is investing significantly in upgrades to its aircraft to further mitigate nighttime noise impact on the areas surrounding the airport. There have been suggestions that HKIA can divert some of its traffic through closer cooperation or rail links with airports in the Pearl River Delta to ease our own capacity constraints, but for many reasons this is not a feasible option. The express cargo business thrives on fast and efficient on-time delivery of e-commerce. The value of Hong Kong as an express cargo hub lies in the efficient sorting and consolidation of cargo and rapid transshipment of cargo between different flights in the network, which in turn relies on a single inbound and outbound hub with freeport status. Splitting cargo operations between other airports would not just add complexity and cost, but also deprive our capability to achieve overnight delivery of express cargo and mail. In summary, express cargo supports e-commerce is the fastest growing sector in air transport, especially in Asia and mainland China. It is vital that air HKIA keeps pace with the growing aviation trends in the region and acts to absorb the unfulfilled demand for air transport, 
which in turn must only enhance Hong Kong's overall economic development. Failure to do so will result in the city losing its position as the leading aviation hub in the region and allowing other regional hubs with ambitious expansion plans to overtake Hong Kong. Air Hong Kong fully supports the plan to build a third runway to ensure efficient airport operation. Thank you. The next is Ms. Lisson. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I speak on behalf of the Airline Operators Committee. Our committee represents 91 uh, businesses that are operating in the Hong Kong International Airport. There are 64 airlines, and we, recruit, uh, we employ more than 45,000 employees. As a representative of the airport airline operators, uh, we support the third runway, which will uphold Hong Kong as an international uh, air, uh, air hub. And that's a major uh, pillar for Hong Kong's economy. Uh, we support the environmental permit issue. Uh, uh, air traffic will cause environmental impacts, but the airline companies are taking active measures to minimize such adverse impacts. The airlines have been uh, doing its best in buying more environmental uh, fleet and introduce environmental measures and reduce waste and recycle waste. The uh, ground surface have also uh, and also the uh, on the ground uh, the vehicles have converted to L the use of LPG and we try to maintain a balance between development and environmental uh, protection under the IATA, there is a very uh, uh, ambitious uh, carbon reduction program. In fact, um, efficiency, fuel efficiency, is increased by 1.5 percent, and there are limits for carbon uh, restriction, carbon emissions. Starting from 2015, CO2 net emission will be reduced uh, by 50 percent uh, in comparison to 2005. Now, airline service is a service industry. Our main concern, therefore, is to make sure uh, that when they make use of the HK, Hong Kong International Airport, there is a nice experience. To achieve that is not easy. At present, the two runway system and other supporting facilities are operating at capacity. In the uh, airport terminal, space is limited. The counters, the gates, the security uh, gates, have long queues all the time, and with more flights, uh, there is um, more waiting time required uh, for landing and taking off, and passengers may have to take buses to go to the terminal, and takes that takes more time. Uh, limits in uh, the space uh, in the airport and in airspace. Uh, has imposed a constraint on the development of airline operations in Hong Kong. There's a need to build the third runway and provide more space. Thank you, Chairman, for listening to uh, our views. Thank you. Next, Mr. Alex Lau. Good morning, Chairman and members. I speak on behalf of the Hong Kong Dragon Airlines Limited. The Dragon Airlines is based in Hong Kong. Um, we serve 49 airports, 22 are in the mainland. Uh, we link the mainland airports with airports of the world. We fully support the development of the third runway. I will speak on the environmental measures. In terms of uh, airport capacity, uh, the earliest uh, the airport will be operating at capacity next year, and we need a long-term plan to deal with long-term demand. Hong Kong is linked to about 180 uh, airports, including more than 40 um, destinations in the mainland. We need to uphold Hong Kong's status as an international uh, uh, hub. We need adequate capacity. We understand that the third runway will have adverse environmental impacts. We welcome the EPD's uh, permit. Well, we think uh, that uh, environmental protection and economic development are equally important. Uh, the constraints in the airport and congestion of the airport have caused adverse impacts on the environment. Uh, aircrafts have to uh, circle in the air or have to wait on the ground to wait for uh, air traffic control directions. 
and when and the uh, airlines and uh, the aeroplanes are waiting on the apron for a very long time, that's a waste of fuel, and that will increase carbon emission. The airline, the airline industry attaches importance to the impact on the climate change. Under the leadership of the IATA, a number of measures has have been introduced towards cutting carbon emission. Ms. Ng has re uh, spoken on that. I don't repeat that. These objectives are aggressive. The airline industry has the determination to minimize adverse impact to achieve sustainable development. Hong Kong has all along been an important hub in the region. Uh, we need to go forward, otherwise we will just be uh, lagging behind, and our development will be affected. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mrs. Jenny Lam. The uh, Cathay Pacific Catering Services Hong Kong Limited fully support the third runway. Our company has been operating in the Hong Kong airport for more than 47 years. We have actively participated in the improvement of efficiency of the Hong Kong airport. We are committed to, to provide um, high quality catering service. We um, have more than uh, 40 uh, clients who are airlines. We provide catering service to airlines. We support environmental protection. Sustainable development is our vision and mission. Technology is able to uh, improve environment. Uh, we invest heavily on technology. We spend more than $2 billion to expand existing facilities to keep pace with the long-term development of the uh, Hong Kong airport. Design and operation of facilities uh, aims at reducing carbon emission and protecting the environment. We introduce a number of greening measures, new cooling system, upgrading our uh, vehicle team, uh, switching to electric vehicles, introducing recycling measures. These investments uh, demand uh, an economic return. It's also important to uh, maintain Hong Kong as an international uh, hub. Now they, um, Third runway has obtained the uh, environmental permit. We hope that the measures can be implemented, and there can be financing for the third runway so that the runway can be built in time. Expansion of the airport will provide a lot of business and job opportunities. Uh, measures, uh, environmental measures, can also be uh, strengthened. Uh, other cities in the world. Attach importance to environmental protection, nor do they ignore the need for economic development. And as for environmental protection is concerned, um, it should start with uh, the person himself or herself, and we should start uh, to teach how to teach young people how to protect the environment instead of standing in the way of building infrastructure. Hong Kong is lagging behind uh, the second tier cities in China. We need the development of the third runway. Thank you. Thank you for your view. Next, Mr. Uh, Tong. Good morning. I uh, represent the um, Cathay Pacific. Uh, I will speak. Um, on behalf of the Cathay Pacific, the uh, Hong Kong Airport is operating near capacity. It takes at least 10 years to build a runway. Building a third runway is very urgent. It cannot be. It should not be delayed. Uh, we need to uphold our competitiveness. We understand that the construction of third runway will affect the environment. The Cathay Pacific welcomed the permit issued by the EPD. Building the third runway must be in line with environmental protection, environmental protection should be balanced with economic development. Uh, Cathay Pacific has invested in more environment aircraft. From now until 2024, about 80 
uh, green aircraft will be introduced with invest about nineteen billion dollars. Uh, Boeing seven seven ER and another uh, air freight uh, freight aircraft are able to reduce carbon emission by seventeen to twenty eight percent. As for noise emission, at present the noise level in comparison with three or four decades ago uh, has been reduced by about twenty decibels by twenty twenty. The uh, decibel, the, the noise level can be reduced by another fifty percent. We are also uh, enhancing our fuel efficiency. Seven four seven, four hundred and Airbus three four eight four three four zero have been phased out. We are going to enhance our efficiency fuel efficiency by two percent a year. We are looking into sustainable fuel. We invested in a uh, biofuel uh, full crumb bioenergy in the United States. The company is uh, researching into developing uh, municipal pay if municipal ways uh, turning municipal ways into biofuel. Um, the objective is to provide three hundred million tons of biofuel. And we have uh, com we are committed to the IATA's goals. I will not repeat that because many have spoken on the net. The, ex uh, the the international airport is number one airport hub uh, airport in the world, and the constraint on our airport affects air traffic service and imposes a constraint on our economy. We need a third runway to create more space for growth. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Watson Chen, uh, the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce supports the third runway on behalf of the business community. July last year, in July last year, we submitted paper to the Economic Development Panel, and we do not want to go into details here. Some say that the delay in the third runway will impose a constraint on Hong Kong's competitiveness and. The development of other uh, industries and um, the creation of jobs. Large scale infrastructure will have an impact on the environment. The ECO is to maintain a balance between economic development and environmental protection. And that is exactly what is meant by sustainable development. It's not that there should be any development. Uh, in order to protect the environment, the AA has submitted the EIA report, and the EIA report is up to the requirement of the government. The majority of the speakers have agreed on that. The question is about uh, being forward-looking. Um, how should we monitor the AA in fulfilling the requirement of the EIA report in terms of air conservation, fishery conservation, and fishery? Uh, no cutting noise and maintaining dialogue with stakeholders and upholding transparency. Finally, I'd just like to reiterate that uh, most of us do wish uh, Hong Kong to be able to develop in a sustained manner. Next, uh, Mr. Ma Chi Kit. Uh, I'm a young man of Hong Kong. I support development. However, I must speak out uh, in connection with what I heard just now, especially airspace. Now, uh, we hear from the pilots who have spoken here. Why is it that the Hong Kong planes, plane circle above Hong Kong, is because we have to climb very high. We can only make use of the space in the south to fly north. So the planes are forced to make circles over Hong Kong. It's not a question of the runway. So the government and the AA should respond appropriately. Now, how do we resolve the air war or airspace issue? There is no solution or timetable. Now, even though we support development, 
yet we may not be able to use it in an efficient manner. Now, next, the environmental concerns. Now, we must also pay heed to our environmental needs. Now, the government proposed the project and uh, it leaves this to the AA, which it owns 100%, and then it engages its own consultant, and then it leaves this to be approved by its own advisory body. So we are wondering whether there is genuine gatekeeping. And also we are concerned about economic development. All along people say that aviation uh, has brought uh, a lot of uh, benefit. Uh, it's true that we need uh, imports from abroad. Now, Mr. Wang Wai Ki uh, has made a, an appropriate comment. He said that when he boarded the plane, most of the other passengers are from mainlanders not Hong Kongers. So the economic benefit to Hong Kong may not be that high. So the Hong Kong young people only benefit at the low end. We do not share most of the benefit. We can only engage in some grassroots jobs. Now we can see that the express rail link is still a black hole, the Lin Tang uh, development uh, is uh, still uh, lagging, and uh, so the third runway may be another white elephant. Next, uh, Mr. Yim Kim Peng. <clears throat> now, expansion of the airport is urgent and uh, it's well justified. We should find ways to implement it quickly. There should be no more delays, otherwise we would repeat the, uh, see a repetition of the delays, uh, such as in the case of uh, Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge and the express rail link, and there will be an escalation due to inflation and the costs. Now, the third runway and the passenger uh, terminals and other facilities uh, uh, do encounter difficulties. Uh, we need to have a holistic approach to the solutions. Now, the EIA is acceptable. We should immediately embark upon uh, conservation measure projects, uh, and then we should launch into those projects, and then we should ex look into the expansion of uh, airport facilities. Now, the EIA needs to be forward-looking. Now, the airport will only be completed in 10 to 20 years. Now, in 10 or 20 years, now there will be a sharp reduction in carbon emission. Now, will the dolphins uh, move to more appropriate locations? Uh, we should look at the impact of science in 10 years. And also, when we select the project works. Now, we should try to uh, avoid uh, a, uh, a having all the major projects uh, being start, uh, worked up, embarked upon at the same time, leading to a shortage of manpower and resources. Now, even if we start today, uh, we can only complete the third runway in over 10 years' time. Uh, so by the time the construction is completed, that's the time uh, we, the airport will be saturated already. So we need a long-term plan to meet our long-term needs. Next, uh, Mr. Fu Ka Ho. Thank you, Chairman. Now, when we last had a meeting on 3RS, uh, it the, happened to be the start of the umbrella movement. At the time, very few people attended because people were focusing on what happened outside. At the time, I said that many of my fellow students are concerned that the EPD will take advantage of this and try to pass the 3RS quickly and get an environmental permit. 
and we know what's the outcome now. Uh, that's why we are here. So our fellow students are very disappointed about this decision. Now the AA and the EPD and the uh, they together with the government they overlook people's views. Now many of our fellow students uh, study public policy. We are taught how public resources should be distributed so that different groups uh, can enjoy a better life. Now, on the, now there are environmental science issues regarding the uh, th three RS, and there are transport issues. Uh, now, many experts are um, green uh, experts. They provide data questioning the necessity of the third runway, and the. Uh, a lot of environmental issues uh, are left unresolved. So the members of the public really question there is a need for the third runway. Now the AA uh, has conducted a lot of public consultation in connection with the 2030 master plan, uh, but right now so many members of the public still question the project. Should we embark upon it? that hastily. Now the AA and the EPD keep telling us the economic benefits of the third runway. Uh, it ignores the concerns of the concerned groups. Uh, it's not sincere. Uh, and uh, the uh, so it's just like the administration telling us to pocket the uh, false universal suffrage. Now Uh, Two hundred billion dollars can be used for public housing and uh, retirement protection, and I like to remind the officials. Now, after the umbrella movement, many of members of the public have changed their mentalities. They don't just focus on economic development; they are getting more concerned about society. So. Uh, uh, I am not sure that what happened in Narita will not recur here. Uh, uh, next, uh, Mr. Uh, Kanchin. Now we are strongly in support of the third runway system. Uh, there are more benefits. Uh, uh, for us, the uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, it's uh, certainly beneficial. Uh, if there are more flights, uh, it uh, benefits the traders uh, and the public, the catering industries, and so on. The airline companies uh, are able to become more competitive, given that there will be more flights and uh, costs for air fares will be lowered, and this will also benefit small and medium enterprises. And also there will be more businessmen coming to Hong Kong. This will also benefit SMEs. Uh, and also the tourism, the construction, uh, the uh, transportation sectors will all benefit. And fifthly, uh, the, for the manufacturing industry, some of the goods have to make use of air transport. Now, if the cost can be lowered, uh, the manufacturing industry will also gain in competitiveness. Now, our association uh, also understands that the uh, 3RS will have an environmental impact, but we believe that for the experts in environment and engineering, uh, this will not be unsurmountable. Uh, all the issues should be able to be resolved. Now overall, our uh, uh, civil aviation industry is already uh, a leading in a leading position in Asia, and we are certainly uh, the leader in the Pearl River Delta, but we are facing uh, unprecedented challenge and competition. We face the danger of losing our existing clients, and <coughs> we will also 
be unable to uh, welcome new clients if we don't move ahead. We'll become a second or third rate nexus. Uh, we will no longer be a major international hub. Uh, and the major airlines may also move away uh, from Hong Kong and we will suffer uh, greatly economically. Now, uh, overall, looking at the industry's needs uh, and the needs for Hong Kong, we do need to move urgently ahead. We thank the 30-odd speakers who have uh, spoken on the 3 rs uh, we thank them for their valuable views. Uh, next, uh, uh, we will invite the EPD, the uh, AFCD, and the AA uh, to uh, respond uh, to the comments that we've heard. And if uh, the uh, delegations, uh, deputations wish to speak, you can raise your hands. Next, uh, uh, Mr. Chair Chin Man uh, of the EPD. With thank the deputations for coming here. Now, we are mainly talking about environmental issues, uh, so I will focus on the EIA. Uh, now, the deputations have uh, made many suggestions. Overall, uh, many think that the EIA is uh, uh, inadequate. Uh, and they think that uh, the EPD should not have approved the uh, report. I must say that the EIA process is a statutory process. It's not uh, just uh, to be de decided by officials. Now, the EIAO, EIA ordinance, has uh, uh, set up uh, objective standards and uh, requirements and principles. We should strike a balance between development and environment and on how to make assessment uh, whether the EIA report meets these criteria. Uh, there are different departments involved. The EPD is not uh, equipped with expertise in every area. Uh, for instance, the dolphin issue. That's under the uh, AFCD. Now, on uh, operation of planes, uh, we have to get views from the Civilization Department. Now, at EPD, after we receive the report, uh, we check uh, against all the statutory requirements and standards. We carefully consider all the comments received from the public and the ACE and the uh, departments concerned have uh, uh, checked the report uh, utilizing the expertise and uh, ensured that the contents are in keeping with the statutory requirements uh, so it is a stringent process, it's objective, uh, it's uh, not uh, partisan, uh, it's not trying to uh, help the AA. We merely uh, follow the statutory requirements in making our approval. Uh, the FCD, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Shum, Joseph Shum, now the role of the uh, Agriculture, Fisheries and uh, Conservation Department uh, is mainly in connection with the impact on fisheries and ecology. Now, uh, in the EIA for the third runway, uh, we have followed the EIA ordinance and the technical memorandum requirements uh, and assess the EIA report accordingly. We feel that the uh, mitigation measures uh, should be effective uh, and the environmental impact should be acceptable. Next, uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Lee of the Airport Authority. Now, having received the EIA report, we have 
been embarking on the preparatory work on the proposed measures uh, so that we meet the, all the requirements for environmental protection. We hope that in the future we can invite uh, members from the public to uh, take part in our activities. Now, uh, members who have indicated the indication to speak are uh, Yu Si Wing and uh, Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Uh, Mr. Yu first, four minutes, please. As we all know, <coughs> there are certain economic uh, developments which result in more people traveling. Now, uh, the UN's uh, World Travel uh, Organization uh, says that there is a 4 to 5 percent growth every year uh, worldwide uh, in uh, uh, by 2030, there will be uh, 1.8 billion people traveling. Uh, uh, and the mainland market has been developing rapidly, uh, double-digit growth in the past couple of years. Uh, and uh, this year is well over 10 percent. Now, so there needs to be good transport and airport facilities. In this regard, Hong Kong cannot lag behind. If we continue to maintain the status quo with only two runways, then Hong Kong's role as a air transport nexus uh, will be lost to other centers. Now, uh, mainland airports, Southeast Asian airports, uh, continue to expand, and we are still in doubt as to whether our new airport will be completed by 2030. But even then, our airport in 2030 is likely to be saturated, so our logistics and tourism industries might shrink. We will be at a standstill. Now, I would like to ask Mr. Lee of uh, the AA. Now, we know that the AA attaches a lot of importance to the environment. It will invest a lot of resources for the environment in building the 3RS. Now, if the 3RS is to go ahead, how much will we invest in environment uh, compared to the entire project cost? And how does it compare with neighboring countries? Uh, Mr. Lee? Now, uh, in the EIA process, uh, uh, we have uh, made commitments on environmental protection. For instance, we will use uh, greener technologies uh, with higher costs. Uh, in our overall calculations, uh, we have, haven't uh, uh, identified separated out the environmental elements in the cost. Now, uh, for purely environmental measures, we are talking about uh, the Marine Ecology Enhancement Fund and the Fisheries Enhancement Fund. Uh, we have uh, briefed uh, uh, you before, and in the future, we will provide the details to the ACE in order to launch the work uh, soon. Mr. Yu, now I feel a little regret. Now, the data is still unavailable from the AA, given our concern about the environment. Now, the public has to uh, learn how much importance the AA attaches to this data, very important. Mr. Lee, um, did you mention in any of your annual reports on uh, how much money you invest on environmental um, measures every year? I don't have this statistic at the moment, but we do have descriptions of our work. Um, with regards to the third runway, um, please continue. Um, we have um, adopted um, the deep cement mixing method, um, it's certainly much more expensive than uh, conventional methods. But uh, will we consider this part of our environmental mitigation costs? Um, there might be controversy, so uh, we um, have not listed the, the fee separately. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. 
um, some deputations um, mentioned um, the issue of flight tracks. Um, this is not a focus of our discussions today, but nevertheless, this is a very important issue. So uh, uh, I hope the, uh, the the government or the airport authority can address this issue. Um, th this issue has led to some misunderstandings among the public, and uh, the, the, some people are concerned that even with the expansion of the third runway, um, the problem cannot be solved because of um, the shortage of flight tracks. Can anyone address this issue? Can anyone address the issue of flight? Or air congestion can um, will the issue of congestion still remain after the third runway is open, Mr. Lee? Um, this issue falls into the scope of the aviation department, but according to the AA's understanding, um, a working group was established in two thousand and four. And uh, solutions have been drawn up on the uh, flight track requirements of the third runway, and uh, they have considered the expansion needs of our neighboring airports. And uh, work is still ongoing, and hopefully a string of measures can be um, established to deal with ever increasing um, flight demands. Well, I think this explanation is not detailed enough. Can uh, hopefully the government can the AA can provide a written response to um, to the panel. We have um, experts and even pilots here today. Can they um, share their views, Ms. Um, Doctor Lo? Uh, who would you like to uh, um, would you like to respond to this question, Captain Davies? confusion about the flight tracks, I think it has to be borne in mind that the current tracks are based on 1950s, 1960s navigation accuracy, where the aircraft could only navigate within a few kilometres. If you take a jump forward, especially to the time when a third runway will be available, an aircraft can now navigate within an area smaller than this room. The accuracy is incredible. And because of that, the flight tracks can be much, much closer than they currently are, where you measure a minimum separation of five nautical miles or almost 10 kilometers. So that allows far more aircraft to operate in the same volume of airspace. And with modern ATC that, it, that uh, Hong Kong City is invested in, that will solve many, many of the, of the, uh, of the issues that we currently see. Okay. Uh, It's very useful to hear from the pilots themselves who operate the aircrafts. I think um, the airport authority and government have been too slow and um, reactive on this issue, and they haven't shared enough details. If you can share s um, certain statistics for the public and members of this panel, um, you should be more proactive. You should share more figures. Um, this way, you can uh, avoid any um, media um, controversies, and you can also clear up some issues um, for the public and members of this panel. Mr. Lee, um, yes, we we have heard his comments, and we will um, relay the comments to the aviation department. Dr. Kenneth Chen, at the uh, environmental affairs panel, we welcome all public suggestions and comments. We are talking about a very important um, issue on whether the expansion of the third runway to go ahead. We have to accept the fact that um, um, we uh, we saw that a lot of the deputations have given their views this morning. We understand that a lot of the deputations would like to see this project go ahead, but at the same time, we have to balance development and conservation. Um, the, uh, um, the EIA report was signed by the EPD, and uh, the AA has done its work. I'd, uh, I'd like to give more time to Dr. Samuel Hong. 
um, the chairman of the um, Hong Kong Dolphin Conservation Society. Um, as I understand, um, earlier this month, um, a young calf of um, a young Chinese dolphin calf was found in Hong Kong waters, and it was um, discovered by the Marine Police, and it was found dead. Um, and uh, the cause of death was due to unnatural reasons. It was hit by a, a high-speed ferry, and it suffered multiple fractures. Um, Dr. Hong, according to your experience, um, are the measures suggested in the EIA report adequate to safeguard uh, or to prevent similar deaths among Chinese white, white dolphins? Um, can the number of deaths be um, contained um, within acceptable limits? Can you give your professional views? Um, Mr. Ho of the Liberal Party um, said that um, the dolphins would migrate to another area naturally. Is this really the case? Are you killing the dolphins um, while um, raising these um, suggestions at the same time? This is not a real balance. Dr. Hong, can you address um, this question? Thank you, Chairman. I've been involved in dolphin research for 17 or 18 years. I've never seen a worse time for Chinese white dolphins. As you know, um, um, as the uh, uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge project is underway, um, I have a declaration of interest. I perform, uh, I conduct dolphin monitoring for other groups at the same time. And uh, the, the land reclamation area is around one quarter of the third runway project, and the number of dolphins are rapidly decreasing. And for um, every um, the, the dolphin sightings, almost dropped to zero or zero point one four. And uh, with these major infrastructure projects, we have a number of um, um, ships passing by, and uh, the situation is getting worse for the dolphins. And uh, when the uh, EIA reports for the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge was passed, a lot of commitments were made, and a lot of promises were made, and a lot of them um, came up empty. And right now, the suggestion of having a new marine park is um, is not adequate or effective. So this is the background we have to understand before we approve the third runway project. Even the airport authority approves or agrees that some negative impacts would be made. Can you give me another minute? Um, the marine park will not be open until seven years um, after the completion of the project. And you said um, the dolphins will come back after seven years. Would it doesn't really make sense? What? Uh, where will the dolphins go in the meantime? Even if you renovate your home, you have to find a place for your, for yourself, right? But uh, you are assuming that the dolphins will come back after seven years, and this is the so-called um, suggestion raised by um, the airport authority is not based on facts, and it's not proven to be effective. And I'm not sure why the EPD would approve such um, an absurd proposal. This is really our grave concern. Of course, we have other issues like air quality, noise, etc. But um, we can see already from um, the example of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Bridge of the, um, the grave impacts on the dolphins of Hong Kong. Ms. Sidho, on the issue of airspace, I hope um, the authorities can uh, provide detailed statistics for the public and members of this panel. Even though we only have two runways, if we um, can negotiate um, with neighboring regions to maximize the use of airspaces, then uh, our handling capacity might increase. And even with the third runway, 
um, if our airspace is still um, constrained by neighboring regions such as such as Shenzhen, if we still if we cannot maximize the use of the third runway, um, I hope the airport authority can give us more um, statistics and information to the public so as to facilitate with um, further discussions. And I have a question for Mr. To um, on the EIA impacts. I've visited New Zealand recently. And uh, the average um, um, national income only ranks 30th in the world. But um, the city of Auckland um, uh, ranks top um, in living quality among the world. And in 2007, the OECD um, invited certain, um, a, a few uh, economists, um, in co including a Nobel winning economist, um, to um, look at um, the issue of economic development from the overall um, public well-being. They do not just look at GDP or um, average income. They actually looked at um, whether every member of the public can live the life they wanted to. And they pointed out that um, public governance should allow um, um, greater um, freedom. They should afford everyone greater freedom from um, economic constraints. So my question for the government and AA is that uh, when you planned the third runway, you do you did do something. Um, you did think on behalf of the young people, but did you really think from the perspective of economic well-being? Did you really ask yourself? Um, which mode of development is the best for Hong Kong? You are just adopting a method you think is the best, but the young people of Hong Kong might not agree. Um, our average um, income has reached thirty thousand um, U.S. dollars per 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 year. But uh, if we ignore the top five percent, then uh, a lot of people are not actually making that much. Can the third runway really um, narrow the poverty gap? Has uh, have you uh, considered this factor when you planned for the third runway, Mr. Lee? Please from the AA. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the issue of economic well-being, as as I understand, this is not part of the EIA requirements. But of course, we will um, relay the issue of airspace raised by Sid Ho to um, the Civil Aviation Department. And right now, are our two existing runways restricted by um, airspace limitations? Right now, the maximum um, capacity is um, 68 flights per hour. And uh, it, um, it has nothing to do with the airspace. According to experts, there are five principles to the uh, economic well-being. Um, we cannot harm the environment, and uh, we should facilitate sustainable development. And uh, we have identified certain problems on environmental impacts, but um, suggestions have not been made. Um, you mentioned the. Uh, um, issue of economic well-being when you talked about the case of Auckland, but uh, we we did follow all the necessary EIA um, requirements. Any other questions for this session? If not, um, let's draw the line for this session. We'll take a 10-minute break, and we'll come back at 11.09. Thank you very much for attending the first session.